look at this morning, again, not so much traditional in the message form of what we deal with on today. We just want to go to the Word. Go with me back to 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 1 Corinthians 5. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. But in all our giving, we have to get the understanding. Because you can have all the wisdom in the world, but if you don't understand what wisdom is saying and what wisdom is doing, you can still miss God. The objective is not to miss God, to be, to be on point with God. Amen? I want to go back to 1 Corinthians 5, picking it up in verse 7. He says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We made it a little bit on this last week. Hit it again and keep running. How many of you know in this season you need to be sincere? I told you that to me that meant have your sin seared out of your life. Christ did that for you when he hung, bled, died, and rose again. Christ did that in the Passover. He made sure that what he was coming after to attack and to take out was not going to be the reason he took you out. So he told you, get behind the door and put the blood on the lentils and be in the house under covering. Death is coming, but you can be covered. I'm going to die a death, but if you hold on, I will rise again, and in my rising will be your liberty. I told you a few weeks ago, so God said, tell my people that get ready to be a divine rising. A divine rising is simply this. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are on one accord that it's time. Time for what? Time to get up. Time to come out, time to move forward in the thing God has purposed for you. But you got to deal with this purging. You got to deal with, I talked about in one message, Passover relief. It is in the season of Passover that God is releasing you. You got to understand this resurrection is your release. It is the place where God says, I turn time in your favor. I turn time in your favor. I make things work together for your good. You just got to believe that I'm the God that has the power, anointing, and ability to do this. And all things are possible to them that believe. All things, you got to catch this, all things are possible if you can just believe it. Believe what? That I am. I am who I say I am. I can do whatever I say I'm going to do. And that, here's the last one, I can do it for you. I can do it for you. I can move for you and put you out of a place of darkness into a place of marvelous light. I can bring you out. I can deliver you. I can set you free if you are lonely. So let's go back to Exodus. We know Exodus is the book of the coming out. When God brought his people out, when God made way and provision, how many of you know anytime we're looking at, for the most part, the Old Testament, we're looking at the promise. And when we get to the New Testament, we're getting to the fulfillment. 
Wherever you can see the promise of God, you should ultimately somewhere find the fulfillment of God. What am I saying to you today? God has never made a promise he had not kept. God has never made a promise. That's why Corinthians tells us all the promises of God are yes and amen. So be it. That's how awesome your God is. That if he ever tells you he going to do it, put it in the bank. See, God don't write checks that bounce. God doesn't have overdraft fees and insufficiency of funds. If God says it, so shall it be. Go to Exodus, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> Look what he says. I pick it up in verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. The Lord told Moses, get ready. I'm getting ready to show you what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. Well, who is Pharaoh? Well, Moses is God's deliverer. So God is speaking to the deliverer, the process of deliverance. He says, Pharaoh, you're in it. Get ready. I'm about to show you what I'm going to do to him. Watch it now. Then the Lord said to Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But my name, Jehovah, was I not known unto them. You knew me as Almighty, but you didn't know me as Jehovah. I'm getting ready to show you the fullness of who I am. See, everywhere God's name is uh, depicted it shows the essence of who he is as God. You know me as God Almighty, but you're going to know me as Jehovah. Who is Jehovah? Jehovah is the one that can fulfill every promise. Watch what he says. Watch what he says. And I also, verse 4, have established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. He says, I'm the God of covenant. I'm the God that keeps my word. Whatever is in the covenant, I am the overseer. Jehovah oversees the covenant. He makes sure his word to you is validated. He makes sure you are vindicated. Look what he says. Five. He says, and I have also heard the groanings of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians kept in bondage and I have remembered my covenant. You went through some stuff and I know it looked like I forgot. But this is a day of remembrance. Ooh, glory. Huh? You've been in bondage. You've been in stressful places. But God says, I'm the God that's going to bring you out. Yeah. Now I'm talking to you right now. Because I just heard something in the Holy Ghost. Look at me. I, I don't look down at it. Every time it's down, this time look at me. Look at me in my eyes. God says, I'm getting ready to turn your time. You ain't here by accident. You think you just honoring the request. 
quick. But you got to heal me today. God says, I'm going to honor my word. Scripture says, I watch over my word to perform it. I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither am I the son of man that I got to repent for anything I ever told you. Hear me now. He says, I heard the groans of the children of Israel who were trying to be kept in bondage but I got a covenant with you. The enemy attacked you, but he didn't know you had a covenant with me. You've been in a stressful place, but you ain't remembered there's a covenant over you. There's something that has been spoken over you before there was a you. I'm going to hit deep in a minute. Before there was ever a you, there was a covenant concerning you. I'm going to read it all in a minute. God says, the enemy has attacked, but he didn't realize who he attacked. He messed with, but he didn't know who you belong to. Now watch this. Here's your word. He says, wherefore say Unto the children of Israel. I told you, God, God keeps dealing with me about this. He said, tell my people. There are things, he says, you've got to understand. He says, talk to my folks. My folks need to know, I don't forget my promise. I don't forget what I say. I honor my word to my people. So look what he said. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. That's first. That actually settles everything. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I'm in charge. I'm in control. I have all power. I am the Lord. So you need to sell that. You need to sell that. See, because until you get that understanding, it, 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 a whole lot ain't going to make sense. Because in the supernatural, uncommon, unorthodox way that God's about to do the thing for you and your household that he's about to do, you got to understand, I am the Lord. Ooh, Jesus. Y'all ain't still ain't caught me yet. Here's the breakdown of the essence of Jehovah. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The triune of God. That when the triune of God comes together for a divine and a specific purpose, ain't a devil in hell can turn his tide. Are you getting this? Amen. You ain't called me yet. If God says it shifts, it shifts. If God says it's over, it's over. If God says it's done. Now, you know, we highlight this in this season. The last words of Jesus was what? It's finished. The essence, though, and the problem is you just don't believe it. But it's what? Finish. I told you a few weeks ago, you cannot crucify the Lord of glory a second time. He will not go to the cross again. Why? Because it's finished. You just got to come to the place of covenant belief that it is so. That's why he said, somebody mentioned it earlier, let the redeemed of the Lord Say so. You got to know you've been redeemed. Yes, yes. To even stand up and say, so? Yes, so what? Yes. It's done. Yes. Say what you want. Do what?
touch you, with you, but his tongue in God is on with his tongue. God says, there's nothing else I've got to do but get you to the place of believing. There's nothing else God is going to do except intercede that your faith fail not. That when he brings you into your divine season of release and your divine season of resurrection, you don't let faith fail you. Did you catch that? Peter, I'm praying for you. Peter, I'm praying for you that your faith they are not. Because how do we receive from God? How do we go forward in God? How do we press in and press beyond if we don't do it by faith? Alright, let's look at this. He said, I heard you. And when I heard you, I remembered my covenant. Now here's what I'm telling you. I am the Lord. What does he say? And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Because I'm Jehovah, because I am that I say I am, because I'm the Lord your God, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, your enemies, your taskmasters, those who are, who are trying to keep you under their feet, those who are pressuring you to be less than who you are, those whose will for you is slavery and entanglement. I will bring you out. You got to get this, y'all. I'm still in Passover and Resurrection. What is God doing? He's establishing again who he is. He's telling you, I am going to bring you out. I am going to deliver you. Did you see that? I will. Y'all missed that. Y'all should have been already shot. He says, I will. When you realize who I am, I will. There's nothing to prevent God but your lack of belief in God. There's nothing to prevent God but your refusal to walk in faith and live in faith. But he says, I'm the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Two, look what he says. And I will rid you out of their bondage. So I'm going to deliver you. I will bring you out. But not only will I bring you out, I'll deliver you. out, but I'll deliver you. I'll rid you of their bondage. Third, look what he says. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. God says, yeah, that's it. you see redeem did that again? Watch this. That's promise. New Testament is fulfillment. Look at this. He says, I am going to redeem you. And when I redeem you, you're going to see great judgments on who? Those who oppressed you. Those who made you cry. Those who made you hurt. Those who sought to inflict 
inflict pain and punishment on you. Get you this? I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great judgment. Last, look what he says. And I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And you shall know that I'm the Lord, your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to give to you, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you. Boy, it here. God says, I will give you what you were supposed to have. That's some stuff you should have had. But you got in bondage. You got tied up with some wrong folks. You got connected with a system that was contrary to the divine will and purpose of God. Are you tracking with me? You got connected to the wrong source. You got connected to what was wrapping you up and tying you up rather than freeing you. That's why the Bible says, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When Christ, who is your Savior, when Christ, who is the Word, has made you free, go your way and sin no more. Apostle, what was my greatest sin? Listening to the wrong voice? Jesus said, God says, my sheep hear. Here I am trying to lead you to victory. Here I am trying to lead you to the land of promise. And you down in Canaan. You down there tied up. You down there working for free. You're enslaved by a taskmaster. But at least you had enough sense to cry out. At least you had enough sense to say, watch this prodigal son. Watch this prodigal. I ain't supposed to be here. I ain't supposed to be living like this, looking like this. Man, I'm eating with pigs. I hear what God's saying, though. There were some things you asked for that were before time. And that's why it hurts you. You weren't ready for it. You didn't allow yourself to be trained to handle it. You didn't position yourself for what God was trying to take you to. 
you never made ready. Huh? See, you had an aspiration to be the doctor, but you never went to school to learn the parts that you were going to work on. Nor the tools that were appropriate for the part that you went to work on. You didn't understand the difference between a scalpel and a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. So rather than going in being Dr. So-and-so, you went in there like Freddy Cooper. And now you got male practice suits. Because you weren't ready for the mission. Jesus. Huh? So what again? Look what God says. I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to redeem you. And then I'm going to take you again as my people. You're going to be my people, but I'm going to be your God. You are going to understand who I am as God. You're going to understand that you can't do this without me. You can't live this without me. But I'm going to send you your help. I'm going to send you your help in the form of my son. I'm going to send you the resolution in the form of my son. Because what's killing you is sin. And if he don't take your sin, you'll be forever in bondage to sin. Go to Luke. Four chapter. So did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see the eye wheels? Do you see what the watch is right there? Let me help you with something. Do you see what the will of God is? Somebody says, I don't know what God's will is for me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is right there. Huh? It's the will of God for you to be out of sin and bondage. It's the will of God for you to be delivered and set free. It's the will of God for you to be redeemed and say so. It is the will of God for you to have a relationship with him as God. It's the will of God. So if somebody, so don't ever say that again. I don't know what God wants for me. Because I just exposed it. Yes, you do. God wants you delivered. He wants you set free. He don't want you in bondage to nothing or nobody. The Bible talks about he's a jealous God. He don't want you serving nobody else more than you serve him. See, this is what the scripture talks about when he said, when he asked him, he said, can you drink of the cup in which I drink? Man, can you, you really want to drink from this cup? Well, check this out. The first cup that you got to drink from is called sanctification. God says, I'm sanctified to do this. I'm sanctified to do this. I'm set apart for you. But not only am I set apart for you, there's also a cup of wrath. Some things you got to fight for. Because he says, I'm going to deliver you from this, which means I'm getting ready to step into this fight. But see, watch this. If you're sitting in here today and you don't believe in fighting, you ain't read this book. want to be passive. No, no, baby. God ain't passive. Huh? You have to drink this cup of fight. Hmm? They call it whoop something else. I ain't going to say it. Huh? But you got to know how to administer that sometime. Because he says the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violence keeps the kingdom. And they do it by force. Yeah. Hmm? You just want to be cute and pretty all the time. You don't want to mess up your hair. 
You don't want to mess up your nails. You know how much it costs to get nails done now? Baby, you might have to get them done over, but after we get through scrapping, we'll get them done over. But right now, it's a fight. Well, but Pastor, I can't mess up, baby. Listen here. You keep, if you get in this fight and they pull your hair out, then what? Hmm? If your weed leave you, then what? Hmm? It ain't gonna matter at that point, is it? You in a fight! Why did you come to the fight looking pretty anyway? You gotta prepare to get ugly sometime. You don't get what God wants for you. Then there's the cup of redemption. Man, listen. He's a redeemer. He's a redeemer. You got to be willing to be redeemed. You ain't going to say so without a cost. To say so is a cost. And then you got to understand that this is a cup of covenant. It's a cup of consummate. It's a marriage, man. Consummate. When you consummate the man, listen, this is a covenant. We coming together with God. The greater is coming together with the lesser so that there are now two greats. It's a covenant. It's a marriage. Jesus. Go to Luke 4. Is it making sense to you this morning? It may not be the resurrection message you thought, but it's the resurrection of his word. You got to understand what God is doing. So look at Luke 4. Let me pick it up right quick and do this. Watch this here. The Bible says in 16, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up for the read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Who we talking about now? Jesus. Jesus said, God's Spirit is on me. The same Spirit I just read you of in Exodus is on me. Watch this here. Because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are what? Mm. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now watch this. And then he closed the book. And he gave it to the minister, to the servant, and he sat out. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, hear your word, this day is the scripture fulfilled. Ooh. Are you seeing it now? Promise fulfillment. This is what God told you. But you're looking now at the fulfillment. Hmm? Passover is bringing forth the fulfillment. Yes, the resurrection, but the resurrection is the fulfillment. This is the feast of season when God says, I fulfill that. So his presence is on, his spirit is on. His power is present. Look at Luke 24. Luke 24. <clears throat> Pick it up in verse 44. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, Luke 24 and 44, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be what? Are you seeing where I'm going? Huh? That's a promise being fulfilled. 
is being fulfilled from whom? Jesus. He said that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of who? What I just read, what I read to you out of the Torah, the first five books of who? Moses. Come on now. He says what Moses wrote about, I am the fulfillment of. Follow me close. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And that's a prayer point for some. You need to pray every day. God open these scriptures up to me. Let this word come alive to me. Why? I need understanding. Remember I told you starting off, wisdom is the principal thing, but in all you're getting, what you got to get? You got to get some understanding. You can't get understanding unless you ask him to open it to you. But always remember, wherever he opens it, you are responsible for what you show. Then he opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer. Look at this, y'all. Who's going into the resurrection? It behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. In essence, it had to be to bring about the fulfillment. He had to suffer. But his suffering was taking on your stuff. His suffering was bearing your burden. Thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name uh, among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Now that I forgot into that this morning, you know, we went to church. It ain't just about us. But this is our season. This is our age of dispensation. And why are we going the way we're going right now? It's because God's getting ready to close the age. And the worst thing to happen is for God to close this age. And you still don't believe. You have yet to repent. You have yet to come up under the blood for the remissions of your sins. God, he says, and ye are witnesses of these things. Look what he says also. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from Ohio. We know that was the Holy Ghost. I dealt with that the other week. One of the worst things you can do in this season is not be healed. To not have it when God has willfully given it to you. And the Bible says you have not because you ask not. We, we talked about that last week. You, 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 you rather have the form of than the true power of. You just rather look like you got it going on than to actually have it going on. You just rather dress the part. This ain't no show. This ain't entertainment. This ain't MTV. MTZ or TMZ or whoever them folks. This ain't all that. This ain't Hollywood. This real. Have you not noticed? This is real life. Hmm? Huh? Now let me help you because y'all, 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 y'all get distracted by television. Television is television. I keep telling you, them actors go home. They don't even really get killed in the movie. Freddy Cougar ain't really Freddy Cougar. They go home. Okay? It's acting. This, this 
ain't no act. What you waking up to every day ain't no act. Some days you wish it was. Uh, you, you wish it was a script you could take the page out of. Yeah, that. This the real deal. Mm -hmm. And the quicker you realize this ain't Hollywood, the better off you're going to be. Huh? Because your hood's for real. When he's sitting there hurting and bleeding, that ain't real blood, that's fake blood. But what the enemy doing to you, you bleed for real. When you get hit, that wound is for real. Jesus. Go to Revelation. I'm almost done. Let's go. Revelation first chapter. Are you catching it? God promised, but Christ fulfilled. God initiated, but Christ is bringing it to pass. Watch this here. John, uh, Reve uh, Revelation, first chapter, verse four. Look what he said. To John, the, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace that that favor is again. Be unto you in peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And that's to tell the church, the only way you come it out is through Jesus. Amen. Tell the church, the only way you're going to get elevated, you got to come through him. No man cometh unto the Father except by the Son. Look what he said. And he are made of that in verse 6. And he, Jesus, the one that washed us in his blood hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, and to him be glory and dominion. How? Forever. Now, I told you last week, ain't going back into it, but Revelation 19 said the horse is arriving and ready. This second coming ain't nothing like the first coming. See, sometimes you mistake the second for the first. No, the first is when I took care of it. The second is when I come to redeem what's mine. But if you ain't redeemed, if you ain't said so, if you ain't been washed, if you don't believe this and take this to be the realities of your life, you're going to miss your kingship. Look at that book. Book don't lie. You're going to miss it. He's the first begotten from the dead, which means what? He got up. Before him, no one ever resurrected. I know for some of you theologians, you said, well, Lazarus got up. Lazarus was resuscitated. There's a difference between a resuscitation and a resurrection. He rose to die again. Jesus still lived. He still lived. He got up and he still up. Lazarus got up, but he died again. So you need to ask yourself a question today. Do you want res resuscitation or resurrection? That's how strong this thing is. That's the understanding you need to get. God, what are you doing? God says, I'm trying to bring you to eternal, everlasting life. Life more abundantly. Go to Acts. Thirteen. Walk the Bible a little bit. Let's walk. That's 13. Look at this. Got to make sense to you. Look 
Look at uh, Acts 13, let's pick it up in 35. He says, wherefore he said, have you noticed today I've been telling you everything he's saying? Wherefore he said, God said, Jesus said. Because I keep telling you, he said, tell my people, remind them again. Watch this. Look what he said. Wherefore he said also in another psalm, thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. But David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on a sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. So be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you forgiveness of sin. Through this man, through Jesus, the word that comes to you is this. You're forgiven. Now watch this. What is then the essence or the significance of knowing I've been forgiven? Come out. What is the objective of this dissertation? Come out. You've been forgiven. Come out. I ain't mad at you. Come out. There's blood on the table for you. Come out. Why are you stuck in Egypt? I promised you I would bring you out. I sent my only begotten son to hang, bleed, and die for you so that his blood can cleanse you. Come out! Because the horse and the rider is ready. Come out! Why are you where you have never been ordained to be? Catch the significance. Jesus, you hung, you glad you died, but the grave was never your destiny. How do we know the grave was not his destination? It was a borrowed tomb. Y'all recall. Listen, this was no pre planned funeral thing you go down there and sign up for. He didn't have a policy, he didn't need one. He didn't have a plot over at Elmwood, he didn't need one. Ooh. He was never purposed. To remain in the grave. You ain't purpose to remain where you are. You ain't purpose to remain in no negative circumstance or situation. You ain't purpose for that. And so because he was not purpose for that. Death couldn't hold him. The grave could not contain him. He was bigger than the grave. He was bigger and greater than them that took him down. So great that after deposit, he woke up and went into hell. You have illegally detained me. I ain't here by right. You got nothing on me. And you cannot hold me. And in fact, when I get up, everybody that you have is illegally detained. That's when the scripture said when he got up, folk just got up at they prayed. Because they were illegally detained. See, you missed that. You missed that. Watch this. They died before him. But they still got up with him. They didn't know what you and I know now. And they got up. You sit 
here planning on staying here? You planning on staying down? You, <laughs> scripture said, you done pitched a tent in your circumstance? You done laid out a cot where you at? The devil is alive. I didn't come here to stay. I'm just passing through this. On my way to glory. On my way to everything God promised me. Are you seeing this? But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. And by him all that that is, all that believe are justified from all things. Now that's one million exact. I started not to hit you because it was real direction, but it's too good. Let's read it again, because you, you still got like deal with the head like watch this here. <clears throat> and by him, all that believe are justified. Y'all still ain't catching. You got to what? Believe this. If you will believe what I'm sharing with you, the Bible says, not me, the Bible. And by him, all that believe are. Y'all still running past words. Let me slow down. A-R-E. Oh. What chance is R? But I gotta tell you this. You're forgiven. I gotta tell you this. Death and struggles and strongholds aren't your life. I gotta tell you this. Because what you're failing to remember is you're already justified. From what? Read the book, read the book. From what? What? You already free. You just didn't know it. You already forgiven. You just didn't know it. You already at the top. You just didn't know it. Sometimes we have to have a refresher course. He says, write this down. And by him are all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Moses put it in place, but Jesus fulfilled it. So watch this. Like this ain't no promise, just a promise no more. It's fulfilled. See, you didn't think we could go from promise, did you? Because he says, I give you everything that pertains to life. God is in the promise. But I'm taking you somewhere today you ain't been. What's going to happen in this dimension is you go from walking in a promise to walking in fulfillment. See? It ain't the promise, it's the fulfillment. This is the truth, it is. It's already done. Watch this. It ain't, it's coming. It's I got it. I got it. That's a whole other realm of revelation. I got it. It's done. Watch this. But God, and which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Be well, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despise us and wonder and perish. For I was a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declared to you. You're going to have to know this. 
Because in this season, there will come many deceivers, false prophets. Proper lying instead of prophesying. Ain't taking you to the book, but it'll spew at their own vomit. And here's the problem. It's the dog in return of sin. It's the false prophet that says, God know where you at. God know my heart. That's the problem. He know your heart. He see your heart. He know your heart without him is wicked. He know your heart without him is evil. But he said, I take out the stony heart and I give you a heart of flesh that is sensitive to me. That's your problem. You hard hearted. You need to be pliable in life. So I can mold you and shape you. So I can fulfill my word and my promise to you. So I can take out the unnecessary. Because as long as you operate in fear, you're never going to walk in faith. As long as you operate in pride and arrogance, you're never going to sustain and be careful. You're going to be your worst enemy. And I've already done the work. Whew. Glory to God. Go to Galatians. I'm almost out of this. So again, I mentioned this verse earlier. I want to repeat it. Look at Galatians 5 and 1. It says, stand fast. What? Therefore. In the liberty which Christ, the resurrected Christ, look what he did. He made us free. Made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of what? When did he say in the Exodus? You in bondage. I brought you out of bondage. I brought you to a place of deliverance. Don't go back. Why go down when I elevated you up? Can you not see that you've been elevated? Can you not, watch this, watch this. Can you not see your own rising? Can you not see where he has delivered you from? Why are you in such a hurry to go back? To what? To who? God says, I brought you out. Not only did I bring you out, I brought you out on eagle's wings. For those in the group, you notice I changed the, the, the screen format. It's an eagle. It's an eagle. God says, I brought you out on eagles. To take you to a place you never would have gone in your own strength. So, are you going to let this resurrection help you? Or are you going to let this resurrection hurt you?